to do a railway bridge, which is an oil painting. We started with this one. It's uh, an early coal bill. It's before the war. No, no, it's not. It would be, this is 47. And it's, uh, the, and it's oil, because that's the difference, because that's before you went to uh, egg tempera and then acrylic. But uh, this was uh, just when he was back. He came back in 1946 to Mount Allison. This is some of Missouri paintings. And the 46, 47 or so, are even the 48, I think, are, are oil paintings. Then he shifted to, to egg tempera. I've always thought this was really evocative of, uh, of the landscape in, in, uh, in Sackville. Oh, yeah. and it's a very moody work, and I've, I've often tried to find the location for this setting, but I've never been able to do well, that. It's there, but uh, he's exaggerated the railway I think, track. I think the, 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 uh, the vantage point is uh, Oh, you know, the road's over here, because, uh, uh, you know, it, 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 you, at, at that point, it's still there, but, but the, tr the, the highway location changed a bit. There used to be a bridge across the river, which is gone. Well, but these were some urban oil tanks and stuff. But they, uh, I think he's, he's taken some liberties with, with, with the track. Eh? I mean, it, it, he's using this big sweeping S-curve, which is sort of classic composition. There's kind of a continuity with his, in the, with his war art in this work. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's uh, the, the fact that Colville uses as uh, elements in his, um, in his pictures uh, machinery and buildings and bridges, and mm. you know, that, that evokes back to a lot of the work that he did at that time, but also with the, his interest in, in engineering as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, you know it, uh, and, and, and if you look at the, the war paintings, you know, the, uh, the palette is very similar because he had a subdued palette in those, in, those, in those war paintings, like the concentration camp things. So the, it, it, the palette is very simplified. Not unlike your palette, I would think. Well, it's very thin, and they're thinly painted too. Because right. the stuff he did when he was a student was thicker painted and darker because he was working, you know, uh, with Stanley Royal, who was his teacher. Yeah. And it was, it, it, and I think. His palette changed quite a bit. Yeah, I don't yeah. see I don't see much of a connection with Royal in this work. He's already no, no. departed from the Romantic tradition oh, yeah. in no, landscape. Uh, the war did that because you know, uh, see, he graduated in forty two. This is forty seven. This would make him. He was twenty seven years old. He was born in nineteen twenty. Eh? Yeah. So he's he's only twenty seven years old. So uh, and he's you know just back starting family and blah blah blah. So uh, it's a and just started teaching. So. Well, it's, a, it's, an, it's evocative on an emotional level yeah. as well, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, there's, there's very little drama in the work other than in, in terms of uh, narrative content, uh, other than the fact that it's a, a, a visually interesting mm -hmm. construction with very little in, in, in terms of uh, you know, narrative content. No. It's, uh, it's it is what it is. I guess it's about emptiness and, and vacancy too. I mean, nothing. There's no train. I mean, it's not like the, the you know, the horse and the train charging. The Which came train. later. Yeah, but you know, some people also use these crosses and things. But I, 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 I posit it. So no it's kind of a preamble to the drama that emerged in his work later, isn't oh, yeah. it? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Certainly, horse and train. The painting I'm talking about. That, that's his. Probably painting. his most iconic yeah. work. Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, so but this one. No train, no horse, but it's a, a, a certainly about the area that you went to school in and I live in. It's certainly evocative of that area. I mean, it, it talks about. I think it, it, it is, I, I, and I wonder how it's perceived by others because I mean, it's significant to me mm -hmm. <clears throat> on a personal level. But I don't know how how well it's. I don't know how it's received by people that don't know the area for one, yeah. and maybe aren't familiar with his work for another. Yeah. It's still so universal. I mean, it is the Tandramar Marsh and it is around Sackville, but I think people could read it uh, wherever they are. People looking at this painting could. Uh, it's not about place, it's about a feeling, it's about emotion. I think. It's not about, uh, uh, particularly, I, I don't, to me, particularly see it as about place. I think one of the criticisms I've heard of Colville uh, always has been a certain perception that he lacks emotion. No, that's not true. No, it's definitely not true, I mean, but it's I a know, very I, reserved I, I mean, I know him, I knew him, and spent a lot of time with him, talked to him a lot, and that's certainly not true. Uh, uh, he, uh, to say that he was intellectual, 
Yes. Uh, yes, yes, he was. Yeah. He was very well read and very in, into philosophy and ideas, but uh, that he certainly wasn't a cold fish. Let's move on to the, uh, one of his later works then, yeah, many, many years later, from 47 until 94. Yeah, this is a late painting for sure, uh, Embarkation. And again, this one's in acrylic because it, it be, then, you know, because he went through. This the, is his mature yeah, technique. He went through the, the egg tempera. He's very mature. In fact, I, I think probably the height of his powers, you know, although he is pretty damn good to the day he died, but this painting is, is, is remarkable in the, uh, you know, just the, the, not the composition, but again, the ge ge geometry of the painting and the way it's divided in the, you know, the thirds here, well, one third, two thirds, basically. I mean, it is obviously less up here, but it, it, the composition, triangle, thirds, you can't get any more than that. And, and this little white area in the center is kind of cool. I mean, it's, it, it's a very interesting painting. Well, he's known for his construction, but I oh, mean, yeah. what I what I see in this too is a, is a, is a tremendous sensitivity which is uh, placed upon that and whatever uh, compositional grid that he's using, you know. Uh, and also, he's a master of tone. Oh, absolutely. And we were talking earlier in, in your own painting about spotting, you know, color and spotting, and, 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 and you know, and. There it is, <laughs> right there. What's that I'm talking about? Uh, the, ah, uh, the obligatory see, uh, spot of bread. Uh, uh, yeah, you gotta have that. You gotta have it or something. Just that, that really draws your eye in. If that wasn't there, it would be an entirely different painting. I mean, it's, it's sort of an add-on. It's a battery for the uh, for the engine on the, uh, the outboard engine. But well, if it wasn't there, <laughs> it wouldn't work as well. Well, in terms of the content, I mean, now we've, we've moved from a painting which which has no human element in it to. Yeah. To a painting which is, um, to my estimation, perfectly autobiographic. Oh, oh, it is. Yes, uh, uh, I mean, and the thing is that most of his paintings, uh, uh, a, lot, a good painting of a lot of people. That's his wife, Rhoda. I mean, and she's there. She, she, almost all the later paintings, but almost all the paintings, she's forever young, right? I mean, uh, she, yeah. uh, yeah, it's uh, you know, she's it, a mysterious it, presence in all. Oh, oh yeah, you never, she was never quite revealed, is she? No. She's always sort of uh, mystified in some ways. She's presented as sort of a, a kind of a feminist, a female icon in some ways, you know. Well, so her back of her head or her face is covered or she has a binoculars. Yeah, she was eyes, saying but, at one time that, you know, because in a small town, Wookville, where they went from Sackville, that when she, uh, and especially that refrigerator painting with them naked there, you know, yeah. and, uh, and, and they picked them up and she seemed a, a, a yeah. stark dude, right? Yeah. And, and she's in this very conservative town. She said, You always went to the post office with people looking at her weirdly, you know, <laughs> because, yeah, because you're telling me that. Because, you know, it is odd, you know, you, you see this uh, uh, little old lady that is picture of her naked, you know, at the refrigerator, and she's not, and holding up pretty good, too. So. Well, that's true, yeah. isn't it? I mean, you do reveal yourself in a bad tub. With, with personal iconography or work which is drawn from a, a, a personal sources. But I mean, well, well it's like when, it was like when your show was in this very gallery here, actually, this very space. You know, mm -hmm. when they were talking about the one with you know the painting of Sophie, you know, and the new paintings of Sophie, and the, and the school kid, the ten or twelve kid, says, "Oh, that's my teacher." <laughs> so I mean, it's sort of like that. Uh, but art, 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 art every, all is forgiven in the art world. In, yeah, in the world of art, I think. But I just remember, like Bonard was the guy who painted his wife always, in, 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 in this mistress, this 20 year old mistress, was always the same woman, even though he painted her for her entire life and his life. And it's kind of cool. And this, you get to, I know this is uh, Alex because the range rover, <laughs> but the hat's just range rover because he's thinking about cars, right? He, he painted cars all the time, he kept on buying cars, you know, Porsches and range rover and land rovers. And, you, you name it, Alston, you know, he had a... Now this, this painting was done in 1994. 1994, right? yeah. Now, how much of an iconoclast do you think Colville is? I mean, you know, he, is, is he, is he uh, by upholding his, uh, his realist tradition in the face of postmodernism? Yeah, I think so. He's 64, so he's painting his painting. But, you know, you, I was telling you earlier, I came down yesterday to look at this painting, and, and, and you and I have been in, in Maine, 
and we saw the N.C. Wyeth painting of, of, of the pier and the fish. There's one in Portland and, and one in the Farmsworth in Rockland. And it, 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 the composition in some ways is pretty identical. And I've got to think that he was thinking of that Wyeth Why, painting. N.C. Wyeth, as good as he is, was an illustrator. Oh yeah, no. And in fact, his solutions to, to were, were, were purely narrative. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think, it, 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 only in the composition, but I mean, he liked uh, uh, Andrew Wyeth. Eh? I think that the first, the first, the first role of an artist that's uh, sub subjective in any, in any mm -hmm. way is to explore the dialogue one's having yeah. for itself. Yeah. So, in a way, is he thumbing his nose at the art establishment and just focusing on his? Uh, and in what way does he actually engage the art world at large? With Not at work? all. I think he, he's aware of it. He was reading art magazines, looking at it. I know that Tooker was a big influence. You know, uh, the great George Tooker, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the subway paintings, he told me that, you could see it. So he was very much influenced. He certainly knew about contemporary, especially contemporary realist art, because, and I say, like he, 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 Andrew Wyeth, and then and, and then Ed C. Wyeth. But, but Andrew Wyeth obviously is a, 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 diff, a better painter, painter than Ed C. Wyeth. Oh, Andrew, Andrew Wyeth. Yes, I mean, do you remember the story about the, one of the, the Andrew's early paintings of uh, the, the coot hunter, he's yeah. walking across yeah, the yeah, field, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, his and his father seeing it and saying, well, he should have had a gun in his hand. Yeah. And he's walking across the field with nothing, yeah. no no aids to yeah. making the narrative uh, shape in any particular way other than the fact that here was a man, and it was more mysterious for yeah. what was left out. Now, with Colville, I mean, there, you get certain compositional, or certain, uh, <coughs> certain uh, narrative ploys uh, by, this, the faces are hidden. Yeah. You know, and this I one, mean, it's an inward look but, at it. But if you're you or I, I and other people that, that, that know of him and, and know him, you know who these people are. And again, if this painting was shown in Europe, well, that's nobody would nobody would uh, get that. Do you think he was, uh, yeah, how, how visible was he in the community where he worked? Oh, well, he walked out to the post office every day well, and said, knew him. Well, and he was, yeah, everybody knew him, you know, and his kids went to kids with other people. I like my uh, He never strikes me yeah. as a hail well met fellow. Uh, no, though, he, wasn't, you know? he was very friendly enough. But, I mean, like his, his daughters went to school with my girlfriend, you know, and blah, 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 you know. Right. And, and he lived in a little house on, you know, on, on York Street. Yeah. Some of the focal points in this work are masterful. Like this, the lightest spot. Yeah. These two. Yeah. You know, the square and the circle. Oh, yeah. Is there a symbolic value to that? or? Well, I think he, he was certainly aware of classical composition. And, and, and that, this painting is... It's a cross. This painting, it? yeah, this painting is composition of open place. You know? Beautiful. It's a great painting. It's a beautiful painting. And, and uh, I think, you know, there's good reason for him to be probably Canada's most famous painting, painter, rather. Uh, and, it's, and it's odd how it developed in a little place like Sackville, you know, uh, uh, and, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, steadfast. You know, right? you know one, of, one of the things that I, that I find and, and I think about when I, when I make the transition from that painting to here, back yeah. to this one again, mm -hmm. is that the tradition that he's drawing from here mm -hmm. is, is a more, um, how would you say it, the expression that's, uh, the, that's, that exists within the work is a product of partly of brushwork, mm -hmm. of, of accident, of, of, of gesture, mm -hmm. and, and in a way it's responsive mm -hmm. as a painting. And one could almost imagine him with his easel out on the, you know, in a yeah. windy day painting this. And so that's why it's a little bit rough and a little bit loose. But when you go into the studio works, yeah. you know, you find that there's a, a calculation which is often his, uh, he's criticized for that. Oh yeah, I know, and, and you can see it. It, it, and I've been in his studio when he was working on paintings, you know. and, and, and you can see the preliminary drawings, and they're all gridded and drawn, but as I said, like he has no hesitation to go against all his, uh, his geometric thing just to make the painting work. He's a hard right. sell in, yeah. in contemporary art world. I don't know many of my colleagues that really like Colville. Yeah, well, I really I, don't think they appreciate the fact that he constructs an image which has a tremendous impact, yeah. for, a tremendous impact emotionally and psychologically, and he builds this image from yeah. the, the ground up. Yeah. He, he formulates it, he constructs it, and it, you can criticize it for being labored in terms of its over-calculation, but I don't think so. I think yeah. he actually makes the painting come to life 
in a way that's intellectual and not from the point of view Absolutely. of observing, of, I, I, of I, copying. I, I, yeah, when, when other Canadian painters say he's a hard, you talk about a hard sell. Well, he's a, I don't think there's any painting he put in the market that wasn't sold, which is <laughs> for a pretty good price. Oh, except <laughs> the stories around Sackville, though, are that the elm tree at Horton's Landing he offered uh, to the university for three hundred dollars. They, they turned, turned it down. It oh yeah, they yeah, yeah, turned no. it down. Well, uh, there's a really famous. Uh, uh, picture, or uh, 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 a print, which they have here, actually, of a cat walking on a fence, which is one of the earliest lithographs, uh, not lithographs, the, the, the silk screens of gold bills. And Tom Forstall has one, and he bought it when he graduated, the day he graduated, from, went into his office and said, the talk said, I would like to have something, I, I like to, how would you sell me that picture? And he said, uh, uh, and it said, how much you got? He said, I got 25 bucks, this is yours. And and everything uh, else. Uh, yeah, uh, so, uh, uh, yeah, it's yours, you know. So uh, uh, okay. I, I wish I had more moments like that. Yeah. I think the last thing I'd like to point out about this is well, he, he made his own frames. I know he did. Yeah. yeah I, he made everything. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Well, actually, I yeah. I can give you that story. I have that a little cold build in my kitchen. I, I was in his studio. and I said, "Gee, that's a nice little thing." He said, "Oh, it's yours. Man. Take it." Nice. So that's good. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, so he built the work from the ground up. Yeah, 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 no, he, he, is, he is very careful, and all the silk screen prints he printed himself, you know, so, and, and every, yeah, he was pretty much, uh, 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 you know, he'd paint in the mornings and take, paint and take the afternoons off, you know, he was, uh, he was pretty disciplined about how he, how he worked, and he's using, you know, he's using the acrylic paint identical to the same way he used a tempera, you know, exactly, he's using it exactly the same way that he was using the egg temper with, with the kind of cross hatching painting things. And you know, and that he passed on to you know, like the Ford stall, but it's uh, not the way you paint or other people paint. He's painting it in a, in a really systematic way. Right?